Kakashi, a 30-ish year old teacher who puts his fingers in his students' buttholes, the epitome of a role model, I know. But despite this underappreciated fact, I am a huge fan. And no fan base, please do not add this guy to the list of anime characters that Nux likes that happen to be pedophiles. It's a total coincidence, okay? Zero correlation. <sighs> Glad we got that out of the way. Anywho, thematically, Kakashi is one of the most important characters in Naruto, and obviously the most important. So despite that fact that someone, I don't know who, made a pretty fantastic video about him almost a year ago discussing the thematic genius of his character, <clears throat> self shill feel free to check it out afterwards, link in the description. But today, I would like to discuss his character psychology, being that no one did as far as I know on YouTube, and I happen to love this kid fingering pervert. Fanbase, please don't take that out of context. Well, I'm sure you're all familiar with the so-called massive plot hole that Kakashi was ridiculously overpowered during the war arc, and it made absolutely no sense that he just got so much stronger compared to a bit earlier when he fought Kakuzu or Pain. I'm going to restate this because I no longer consider this a massive plot hole. Granted, maybe a super minor one, because the power scaling was a bit wonky, but I find that truly understanding the depth of a character really brings all the situations situations that pop up around him to be seen in a different light. Once I thought I fully understood Kakashi's psychology, I no longer consider it a massive plot hole. That, you know, in the past, when Kakashi used his Kamui like twice, he used up all the chakra in his body and he was like hospitalized and stuff. But during the war, he was spamming it nonstop like it was shuriken. And those pouches on ninja back somehow managed to contain infinite shuriken. I guess we'll roast shuriken another time. Back on topic, when Kakashi was fighting pain, he used one lightning clone, one lightning dog, and he was like, wow, that was like half of my chakra. But during the war, he fought the Swordman of the Mist using lightning style everywhere. Fought all the Jinchuriken, continued to fight Obito and then Madara and then Kaguya like a boss. Uh, I mean, this isn't, I guess, supposed to be praise. This is plot hole-ish. In any case, I hope that this video will, aside from fleshing out his psychology, answer the fact that I don't consider this to be as great of a plot hole as it's deemed. In fact, pretty much all the power scaling involving Kakashi will kind of fit into place far better once you understand Kakashi's mind, aside from the fact that all of his actions will also make more sense. So, whammon and gentle whammon, I welcome you to the mind of Kakashi. As a kid, this guy had more clout than a Mafia City level 100 boss, which, quite frankly, I have no idea what that means. But, I assume it's pretty freaking important. This guy broke records with his rank. You know how Sasuke was a kid prodigy and graduated the academy at 12? Well, Kakashi graduated at 5, became a Chunin at 6, a Jonin at 12. And once we're talking Jonin, these are the guys that in the Chunin exams were revered. Base guy blocked Gara's attack against Lee no problem. Every Jonin in the room was fast enough to subdue Neji when he went too far. You know Neji, that... 13-year-old prodigy? Yeah, Kakashi was a Jonin at 12. At 13, he was an Ambu. And then, in OG Naruto story, he was 27. And granted, he was definitely an above-average Jonin, no one's taking that away from him, but he wasn't the god-tier fighter one may expect in him. He was no Minato, and he was no Hiruzen. He lost to Zabuza on their first encounter. Not to call Zabuza a slouch, I mean, he was like a Kage assassin kind of dude, but this wasn't that six-year-old Chunin I would have expected in retrospect. Also, being a badass runs in families to an extent in Naruto. He got the Sanjus, the Uchiha's, etc., and Kakashi's father, Sakumo, was stated to be Sanin level. To get to the meat and potatoes of what's going on here, Kakashi is chronically depressed, and it takes shape in a massive futility complex. Don't get me wrong, Kakashi is still in my top three Naruto characters. In fact, I believe this makes him a far more human character than I would have perceived otherwise. So let's look at some facts here. Perhaps you'll eventually see him in a slightly different light. The philosophy Kakashi crafted growing up was through pain. His father, a very well-established badass, was sent on a mission of extreme importance, but when it endangered the lives of those accompanying him, he preferred to save as many of his comrades as possible by abandoning the mission. This caused him to be vilified by the Land of Fire, the Hidden Leaf, the people he saved, and his son, Kakashi. Sakumo then fell into a terrible depression that resulted in him taking his own life. It is a known fact that depression is hereditary, so while this isn't evidence that depression plagues Kakashi, it definitely does not detract from the possibility. Kakashi became disgusted by his father and developed the ideology that the rules and orders must be followed above all else. In his young mind, that father that abandoned him and betrayed his village for the sake of emotional attachments made Kakashi actively discard his compassionate side, which he viewed as the ultimate 
cosmic weakness for a ninja. When my guy didn't pass the ninja exam, I lost all worth in Kakashi's eyes. And the fact that Obito is far weaker than Kakashi made Kakashi look down his nose at him. Results were what mattered to Kid Kakashi, and that's the mantra he developed to shape his personal ideology. Because a ninja with these feelings are as counterproductive as his failure of a father. Now, it's this philosophy that was absolutely shredded a few years later when Obito saved Kakashi's life out of compassion. Remember Kakashi's famous line, those who break the rules are scum. That's true, but those who abandon their friends are worse than scum. I love this line so much. It's simultaneously teaching the next generation what truly matters in the world, as well as Kakashi reprimanding himself for his past mistakes. This is the opposite of the philosophy that Kakashi developed when his dad died, and it's because of his lack of compassion that resulted in Obito's eventual demise. Once again, Kakashi was useless. And it's not the compassion that caused uselessness. No, it's the lack of compassion in this case. Kakashi was this god tier kid until he lost Obito, or he blamed himself entirely, making his life purpose protecting Rin. That was what Obito saved his useless, pitiful life for, with the Sharingan that Kakashi had as a memento of this. And later, not only were his actions too futile to protect Rin, but he killed her with his very hand. It's not a lack of compassion that's useless, and it's not an abundance of compassion that's useless. Subconsciously, Kakashi develops a futility complex where he viewed himself as useless, living his life in a borderline sedated state, depressed over his past, as he continues living for the the sake of the Leaf Village dwelling in his past futility, visiting the Leaf Village's memorial stone whenever he'd get the chance. As I mentioned in my other Kakashi video, he bears powerful lightning style jutsu, the jutsu his father used, as well as the Sharingan that he bears, which was a memento of Obito. Metaphorically, he's living his life carrying his past as a burden on his shoulders, and psychologically, it's his past futility that defines how he perceives himself. There's an argument out there on the internet that Kakashi's a bad character, purely because of the fact that his win to loss record is rather unimpressive, to say the least. I would, in fact, go as far as to argue that that is, in fact, a strength of his character. Because of where he sees himself psychologically, there's a famous quote that morale is two-thirds of a battle, and Kakashi has none after losing Rin. If anything, he had a negative morale, living in a mental stupor regarding himself as worthlessness, because whatever path he chooses results in futility. He abandoned Naruto to train Sasuke in the tuning exams, and then Sasuke eventually abandoned Kakashi to train by Orochimaru. Naruto found the new sensei and Sakura found the new sensei at this point. Even as a sensei, Kakashi's a failure. As I explained in my other Kakashi video, his thematic narrative is how he's living vicariously through Team 7. This group that strangely represents his own past, with Sasuke representing himself and his goal-oriented nature, Kakashi possessed before Obito's demise that changed his outlook on life. Naruto representing Obito as that aloof idealistic kid that'll do anything for his friends, and Sakura representing Rin in this triangle. Even down to physical medical ninjutsu. Kakashi ends up living vicariously through this group, hoping they won't make the same mistakes he did. And in a nutshell, this psychological state describing his mind to be in kind of explains his entire standing emotionally throughout the series, but power level wise as well. First and foremost, because of his futility complex, he loses every fight. I mean, he wouldn't lose the fodder, but then again, morale is two-thirds of the battle, not three-thirds of the battle. But the first time he fights Zabuza, he just barely loses. But it's only when Team 7, his Team 7, that pulls off some cool shtick that he releases more of his power, i.e. shouting on copying ability and destroys Zabuza. Since he believed in himself, at least to the point that he's stronger than Zabuza, in their rematch, he will win a game with relative ease. His next encounter with a major villain is Orochimaru, in which he's too frightened to even move. Next, he meets Itachi and Kisame, who wreck him. Next, chasing Deidara, where he isn't alone, he uses his Mangekyo Sharingan, which takes the life force out of him. Mind you, he's had this Mangekyo Sharingan since Rin's death like 15 years earlier, but no! Now he'll use it. He won't use it any time before this that he was approaching death. His next fight against Kakuzu, he put up a pretty good fight, but still, just barely, eventually lost, only to get saved by Shikamaru. And then he continued fighting and was losing again until Naruto saved him. Remember, this is like half-dead Kakashi that just got out of the hospital, and he did as well against Kakuzu as he did against Zabuza the first time they fought. Now, don't mind me, but Kakuzu's a lot stronger than Zabuza, and Kakashi fought Zabuza at full strength. But of course, he'll just barely lose to each of them. Next, he fought a couple paths of pain and once again got totally bodied to the point that, yeah, he actually died. Bro, this is the Kakashi that later, with no training in between, fights the Seven Swordman of the Mist, fought off Obito's six paths, which were also Jinjuriki, did a hell of a better job 
and had a hell of a lot more chakra. There was only one thing that happened in between. Kakashi losing to pain and Kakashi becoming utter badass ninja lord in the war. Nope, not physical training. Kakashi is a powerhouse and one talented beast. The only thing that happened between him getting wrecked by the six paths of pain to him wrecking the six paths of Obito was just a little morale boost. After he died against pain, he met up and reconciled with his dead father. That initial source of his heartache and he made up with him. Character design wise, Kakashi, especially by his eye, his demeanor, and a mask that's always covering his expression, it gives the impression that he's never excited by anything. He was a chill dude and took everything in stride. Either it's a demeanor that can stem psychologically from someone extremely comfortable with themselves, which is what I initially thought looking at this badass sensei who didn't seem to have a care in the world, but another purely logical psychological reasoning behind his chill complacent demeanor wasn't that he's necessarily comfortable with himself, so getting overly eager with anything is pointless, but it can also easily stem from feeling useless and living without meaning. If he felt like he couldn't accomplish anything and had no passion for anything, there's no reason to exert himself, even if it would be on a subconscious level that he'd think that way. Because if he feels like he can't do anything, he'll end up pointless in the long run, regardless. So if I'd had to pinpoint it, I'd say it's some kind of blend between these two aspects. The feeling of personal self-futility he developed when he lost Obito and Rin, and the feeling of a futile existence when his father was ostracized and took his own life. Him making up with his father after losing to pain cured that latter half of his psychological demeanor and depression, and that helped him reach far deeper into his subconscious power vault. And all of a sudden, oh my god, War Arc, he's a far more badass warrior than we've ever seen him before. Not everything's futile, and he's actually grabbing W's by the handful. If purely he alone would not have been present, his entire platoon would have been wiped out in the first attack. He'll protect his allies like his father did, because that is what makes a hero. And he'll regroup to support Naruto against the Jinchuriki, because saving your allies is worth giving your life for. And it's not futile. So he'll give them every last drop of his power and life force. And let's not forget how handily his second past trauma was dealt with either. Obito being present tore open all of his old mental wounds. But the beauty is, and I know people complain about this, but at least from Kakashi's psychological perspective, it's absolutely brilliant that Obito ended up succumbing to Naruto's talk no jutsu. Because in Kakashi's mind, the Naruto was this generation's vicariously living Obito of the previous generation. This was an Obito that didn't experience the things that drove OG Obito slash off the deep end. So in his mind, this is an untainted, successful, still idealistic Obito that fixed Kakashi's mistake. Talk no jutsuing OG Obito. Since Kakashi finds himself vicariously reliving his life through Team 7, as made clear throughout the series, and this Naruto talk no jutsuing Obito reconciled the Obito psychological baggage Kakashi carried throughout. The other part of his issues with that previous generation was in the futility he himself felt. The issues he personally caused. As I mentioned, he sees himself in Sasuke. A guy who the entire internet for whatever reason seems to be trying to strangle. Note the editor show some strangling Sasuke me. This Sasuke, as a kid, sold his soul to a path of blood. Kakashi did everything in his power that Sasuke wouldn't follow his own footsteps, where Kakashi discarded every friendship to approach his goal until it was too late and he lost his closest friends. Instead of Sasuke discarding his allies as meaningless like Kakashi did, Sasuke had an opposite repellent. He was feeling inadequate in proximity to Naruto, and Kakashi picked up on this. During the tuning exams, when Kakashi took Sasuke to the side for private training and left Naruto to train with Ebisu Sensei, the worst Jonin in history of Naruto ever, aside from maybe Chojuro, that garbage Kage. <laughs> Ashamed to Kage all over the world, but not the point. Kakashi knew he needed to inflate Sasuke's ego desperately, so he taught him Chidori. Nice one-up to get on Naruto, allowing him to grow closer to his rival. But Sasuke, even with Chidori, still lost the Gara. You know, be Gara. Naruto. Now, this video isn't the mind of Sasuke, maybe I'll get there another time, but this directly gave Sasuke that complex that haunted Kakashi, and he, uh... Let's just say he wasn't so down for teamwork when he nearly killed Naruto in the Valley of the End, then ran away to be trained by this evil snake-humping terrorist pedophile. Yeah, not exactly a star student. Especially because now he's planning on destroying the entire Lee village. Yeah, Sasuke turned out a little worse than even Kakashi did. So in the war arc, which I said many times before, and I'll say it again, did many things wrong. But one of the biggest things it did right was Kakashi's thematic, as it mentioned in my previous video, and psychological writing, as I'm trying to express here. Kakashi got over Obito's aspect of his personal past when Naruto won him over. And again, when Obito literally left the world in his hands. Definitely a sign of trust, if nothing more. And he overcame the Kakashi part of his past, when at long last, after two generations, we got a full synergistic teamwork between Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura. Never saw that with Minato's squad. Granted, Sakura may be negligible in the grand scheme of things, but it's the theme that makes it nice, not her actual usefulness. So, aha, salty comment section averted. Woo! 
That was close. Can you imagine what it would have done for my reputation if I would have gone on record saying Sakura was important to a team fight with Naruto, Sasuke, and Kakashi? Damn. Crisis averted. What was I? Oh, yeah. Kakashi, who at this point against Kaguya has already dropped all of his mental baggage. He's dropped his personal issues because at long last, the entire team is working together, caring for one another. He dropped his daddy issues, being that he met up with him after getting killed by pain. And he overcame the Obito issues because Obito got talked no jutsu and entrusted the future to Kakashi once again. He dropped all his mental baggage and he is at 100% badass ninja mode. His story is finally completed when after living the last 20 years in pain, managed to drop all of his baggages that he's retained from his father's demise, from his personal team, including himself, through the assembled Team 7, as well as Obito finally moving on and giving Kakashi his will of fire. Well, his will of fire and two manga kill shouting guns for the land of the dead that somehow gave him a perfect Susano, but we don't need to talk about that. On a superficial story level, no one's really a fan of that fact, but on a metaphorical level and even on a psychological level, him taking Obito's will and using it in his final battle is a perfect way to wrap up Kakashi's mental story and allow him to finally look into the future. Kakashi's a young dude at only around 30, but he's already lived the life of up and downs. Now it's time to crown him Hokage for a job well done. Kakashi's mind is the story of anyone to some degree that had to overcome past issues and wind up becoming an even stronger person through that success. It's because of this that Kakashi, the most human character in Naruto, is my second favorite Naruto character of all time. Hitachi video coming eventually, bitches! Feel free to subscribe Scrabble. Also, if you liked the video, definitely leave a like. Let me know your opinion on this psychological analysis, future psychological analysis you'd like, as well as any random anime stuff. I'm all ears here. Link in the description to my Patreon, to my merch, and to my Twitter. Feel free to follow me there. All patrons are invited to the Discord server, where I am bullied constantly by you guys. Very cool fan base. Very cool. I especially wanted to thank King Beat My Meat, Christopher J. Nolt, Sage of Snakes, Steelers, Pop Up. Grumpy Welshman, Wilson Fletcher, Team Sparky 65, Lazy Ronan, Gertie Wormjin, Fernando Cost, Allison Stricker, JD Fincher, Q Tip, Cosine Pitch Shifters, E Laser Sash, Nick Sands, King Tank Games, Play Praise Lord Bobo, Frisky Dingo, Florida Man, D Chillin, Miriam Ramirez, Q, Praise Lord Gugirugameshu, Mitochondria, Nate, Philippe Brights, Sergeant Malarkey, Buried Minotaur, Kaiser Juanar, Crazy Beat, Divine Reigns, Miku Teakui, and TM Philly. I of course also wanted to thank the Lord Tweeger Rank. Mizi Jeezy, Anthony Booth, Cream My Pancake, Puzerker, Prela, Rari, MD, Santo Kyomasa, Zindergarten, James Patterson, Emperor Misha, and Kyle the Warrior. Thanks to the God Usap Rank, Burning Bush, Dark Element, Eduardo Flores, Muafak, Necro, Sunny Parks, and Maurice Luis Dreyfus, and the one above all that has Hashirama cells, thanks, Gremin. Thank you all so much for watching until this point. Definitely let me know in the comments future videos you'd be interested in seeing, as well as if you enjoyed this one. Have yourselves the most wonderfully evening and remember to stay weird fam